swords will contend in the mid-heaven skies. And kingdoms will fall, and kingdoms will rise. Oh, my fight begins with the enemy's lies. I laid hold. to be come everyone to drink all who are thirsty i hear them calling me the spirit and the bride to be come everyone to drink all who are thirsty i hear lines need to be opened for the future. You have looked at that as what's coming to me. Where is my supply line coming to me? The Lord says the supply is in you. He says, I'm waiting for my people to unlock the supply that's in them because it is needed. It is needed. These are the new supply lines that need to be opened. This is the day the Lord said, you have the keys open up let what i've deposited and built in you be released let the supply be released because there are many 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 who are calling who need what i've deposited in you and it is not going to come any other way except that my people open up new supply lines of my spirit of my provision of my word of my deliverance of my healing of my prophecy open up the supply within you and open up those supply lines put your hand on someone next to you and decree the activation of that opening within them is going on and the lord said some of you have keys to the grain silos where the grain is stored and the lord said you will be used to feed in times of famine and lack so the Lord says, find your key. Those of you who hold the key to the silos that hold the grain and the new wine and the oil. And God is saying, it's time to stir up the gift of tongues. In light of Chuck's message last week, I think that's very significant because Chuck said God has begun a new movement and he's inviting us to jump in. And you know, when God started... The first movement of the Spirit back in Acts 2, the first thing he did was a great outpouring of the gift of tongues. And so this morning, we want to understand the gift of tongues and how God wants to bring it forth in our lives in a powerful way. So first of all, what is praying in tongues? Well, praying in tongues is praying in the Spirit. I like to define it this way. The gift of tongues is the God-given capacity to let the Holy Spirit express himself through you in words that your mind doesn't understand. Now, in the 20th century, tongues was something new. It was a lost gift that God was restoring to his church, and many did not understand it. The result is many feared it, many questioned it, 
Some, even though the Bible specifically says do not forbid to speak in tongues, some churches forbid to speak in tongues. And yet the Bible never presents tongue as a dangerous thing or a thing to be avoided. It always presents it as a valuable gift of God. The Bible says every one of the apostles spoke in tongues. Paul thanked God that he spoke in tongues more than anybody. And Paul wanted every Christian to speak in tongues. In two different passages, we're told if we speak in tongues, it will build up and edify and strengthen our spirit. In Ephesians 6, we're exhorted to pray in the spirit, to pray in tongues on all occasions, but especially when you're in spiritual warfare. We see the New Testament was written by people who speak in tongues. In the New Testament church, speaking in tongues was the norm. Now, in the dark ages, when the church compromised with paganism, the Holy Spirit's anointing left. And the gift of tongues, along with most other gifts, was lost. The gift of tongues was finally restored to the church in the Pentecostal awakening at the start of the 20th century. But for most of the 20th century, there was a battle over tongues. People didn't understand it. Many people didn't want it. And yet it continued to spread everywhere. It's estimated by the end of the 20th century, half the church worldwide was practicing tongues. So let me say, if you got turned off by the controversy over tongues in the 20th century, I just got to tell you that controversy over this gift is pretty much over. It's gone mainstream. But we still have to choose to exercise it.